It was too too far to go up the town, you know. I mean, you couldn't get into Wolverhampton without without having about a five mile journey. The the university put on uh, buses for students, so the students didn't have to sort of try and find some public transport. They were bussed in um, every day, in and out. And I think it, so, and it finished early. It sort of finished about like four o'clock. You know, there was no evening stuff going on or anything. So it was a it was a short a short day, but it, but we put a, a degree show on down there, um, which was excellent, you know. I mean, it was uh, it was really good, uh, and everybody really. It was like um, what the, what do they call it? It's war effort, you know, like a a blitz spirit. A blitz, yeah, yeah, a blitz spirit, yeah. Uh, you know, it really was. It was fantastic. Nobody was downhearted about it. Ne near the end of this time, um, we had a, a thing, information come through that uh, uh, they'd allow, you know, a, a couple of people in from each area uh, to, to go in and, uh, and retrieve stuff. Well, it was about halfway, think of it first of all, it was about halfway through. So we were allowed after so long to go in and we, we, we got stuff together that we could, got it in the in the in the uh, passenger in the, in the uh, lifts and got it out outside so they were get, able to get a bit more tackle a bit more kit uh, uh, to take down there which is what we did and that was that but while we were in there we noticed there's a lot of, a lot of wreckage things were getting sort of smashed up and that um, and then and then near the end of it all we we were let back in again when we were let back in Remember, we had to wear these like paper suits with the visors on. It was all, you know, all sort of, you know, walking through these tunnels and that to get into the place. It wasn't just in the door like we're coming now. I mean, it was all through through these igloo type of tunnel things and airlocks and all that sort of caper. It was like landing on the moon, you know. And we went in and had a look around. Things were all smashed up, so we all wrote... We all wrote reports about this. And uh, what had happened was the contractors had subcontracted, who'd subcontracted, who'd subcontracted, and it just went down and down and down and down. Uh, and obviously started off with a very reputable firm. The people ended up doing it were, uh, were disreputable. And um, there was all half our cameras being stolen, tellies. I mean, they were even trying to sell tellies. They'd nicked out of here down at the Feathers pub, you know, things like that. So the university decided that they were going to sue this company, and they did, and it took seven years, and, they act, and, and we won the action, and we put, this, we put them out of, out of business in the end and, and won a lot, of, uh, a lot of damages. The ceilings had got asbestos sprayed into them, and they were, it was quite safe, really, because it was painted and sealed. It's only when it's not sealed that's the trouble. But it was painted and sealed. But nevertheless, they decided to get it all out. Because I remember this when I went up onto the third floor into the printmaking area. They only just put a pair of ladders, step ladders, woof, smashed the glass into a light box so that it could get higher up. You know, they, they, they took no regard of anything. I don't know that they must have thought that 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 the place was being stripped out bare. And it was going to be a derelict building, or you know, or, or turned into something else, and everything was scrap. But uh, it's just unbelievable, really. And it was a real, um, it was really down. Everybody was really downhearted about all the equipment that was missing, and then that had to be repurchased and recovered. So even coming back in was a bit traumatic, you know.